Hey, Buddy Cosplay here. Now we're going to make some face molds. Tee hee. <laughs> Hello everybody, Buddy Cosplay here and welcome down to the lab. We are going to do something a little different today. There's always a good use for something like a face mask or a positive representation of your face, not a face mask. Um, a positive can be used for many things from sculpting clay um, prosthetics to uh, many other kinds of things you could think of. So we're going to go ahead and make these just so you can have one handy in case the need arises. We're going to make two different kinds over two videos. We're going to make one that is on the cheap, which is going to be made out of plaster bandages, and basically with just some plaster bandages and some water, you could do it yourself at home. And then we're going to go the more professional route. We're going to do one out of alginate. And alginate is a, is a premium type of mold making material that you'll see in the next video that uh, really captures a lot of detail. So for this video, we're going to start with the cheap and the easy way, which is just using plaster bandages. This is the result of the plaster bandage uh, negative that I made of my face, and then I poured plaster into it to make a positive. It has all of my facial features that I need, the sizes and everything, but that's about it. You can see that there's not a whole lot of detail. It's kind of clunky in some spots, but it, this works great for just basic things, generic things, if you're wanting to build up some, some fake latex prosthetics or something like that for your cosplay, this is a cheap and easy way to do it. So, let's get started. We're gonna begin with our materials. We'll need some water, we'll need some plaster of Paris to make our positive from. Of course, we need plaster bandages to make our shell. Also, some petroleum jelly for your eyebrows and eyelashes, something to clean your face with, some skin moisturizer if you wish, and some plastic wrap to cover your hair, or you can use a bald cap and a hair dryer. And then, of course, it's good to have some extra hands, even if they're disembodied, such as these. Start by cutting different size strips of your plaster bandages. I'm going to end up with about four or five different sizes and lengths. And you want to remove your glasses. And clean your face. Make sure you remove any makeup or... What's that? Remove the makeup if you have it on. Clean your face or just wash it in the sink. And then we're going to move on to applying some baby lotion to our face. This plaster will seem to pull out a little bit of moisture, so this is just a good little extra step. Of course, it is optional. We're going to use some Vaseline or some petroleum jelly for our eyebrows and eyelashes because we do not want our hairs to stick to the plaster. If you have hair, shave it or cover it. I don't have hair so it's not a big issue for me but you can use something as simple as some plastic wrap to put around your head covering all of your hair. Use some some tape on the sides to keep it in place and you'll be good to go. Take a strip of plaster bandage put it in the water and squeegee some of the water off. It's important to squeegee some of the water off uh, for a couple reasons. One it'll dry a little faster and the second it'll um, It'll help activate that plaster a little faster. I like to begin at the bridge of the nose because that's the most difficult contour we're going to have here. Make sure you press it in really well and try to get all the detail while you're using your plaster. And I'm going to make sure that all of my strips are overlapping one another so that they help support each other during the process and it won't be too weak. Switch into different size ones to capture more detail. Making sure I leave my nostrils open so I can breathe the entire time. At no point do you want to cover your nostrils and not be able to breathe. You want to be able to keep your mouth closed during this whole process.
Now we're just going to keep adding strips of various sizes to different parts of my face, covering my forehead, the side of my head, all the way down under my chin. So I'll basically have a mask that cuts pretty much down the a vertical of my face from the top of my head to under my chin. Again, we're making sure we're pressing this in to get all the detail and getting close around the eyes. Don't get the stuff in your eyes. And if you wish, you can, if you have a partner that is, you can cover your eyes or you can cover just one eye so you can still see what you're doing with the other. It's really up to you. And you continue this process until you look like a mummy or one of the Jabberwockies and you break down and dance. And grab your hair dryer and help this dry a little faster. This will take about five solid minutes to cure if you're using a hair dryer. It could take up to 15 without. Now put your head forward and start wiggling your face around, making little expressions until things start to break loose. And even though I had just a little tiny bit of stubble on my head, it's stuck. So it's good to have a bald cap or make sure your head is shaved. And then you kind of look like Uncle Fester. And this is what it looks like when you remove it. And if you hold it up to the light, you'll see the thin spots. I'm gonna mark these thin spots on the outside with a marker and I'm going to go ahead and reinforce those spots with a little bit of additional plaster bandages. I'm also going to take the time to cover the eyes and around the nose just to make sure everything is nice and solid for the plaster that I don't want to leak out. You can set that to the side to dry or you can speed dry it with a hair dryer. And once it is completely cured, prep up a box that this can sit in, something that it can sit in overnight. I just have some supporting cloth underneath this box and a hole cut out of roughly the size of the shape of the face. Now it's important that since you're putting plaster inside of plaster, you want to create a release. A release agent can be pretty much anything, but I'm going to go with Vaseline here. Vaseline will not dry. It will allow me to separate the plaster bandages from the plaster positive much easier in the end. Mix up your plaster of Paris or whatever kind of plaster you're working with using the instructions on the box in which the plaster came. And you want this to be like a thick, creamy soup consistency. Use your hands and make sure you're crushing up any of the little lumps in there as well. You want this to be as smooth as possible. Once it's ready, go ahead and pour it in. I like to mix mine up in two batches so I don't waste any plaster. And I'm going to put my fingers in all the different cracks and crevices to make sure I'm releasing any air bubbles that might be there so that, that won't show up in the finished product. I mixed up a second batch of plaster and set it in there and I set it over to the side to cure overnight. Now that it's cured, I'm just going to try to start making everything a little bit looser by touching the edges and pulling at it. And if you need to, cut it with some scissors and start removing things. Be careful around the nose because it can it can grip the nose and you might rip the tip of your nose right off. And I feel like I've said nose 27 times. Anyway, be careful around the nose. Take your time and make sure everything gets removed. And here's what you have right now. 
Of course, we're going to clean this up a little bit, but you can see that it's pretty accurate to my size and dimensions of my face, which is what we want. Now using some files or some other little blades, I have a small flathead screwdriver that I'm using here. I'm chipping away some of the extra plaster that I don't want. And then I'm following that up with some sandpaper. I grabbed some dirty sandpaper, which happened to leave some black on there, so don't pay any attention to the black. And once it's all done, I've dusted it off, and here's the finished piece, minus a cover or a sealant. And for a sealant, I'm going to use Mod Podge. I'm just going to put some Mod Podge on it. I'm going to give that time to dry, and I will recommend that you let this plaster sit for a full 24 hours before applying this, because you want all the moisture out. We're going to repeat putting layers of this on three to five times, however many you wish to have to protect this so when you're putting things on it, it won't stick to the plaster. At the end, you'll have something that looks like this. And here's a comparison between one made on the left with alginate and one on the right made with the plaster bandages. Of course, the one with the alginate has a lot more detail, as you can see up close. It's got every little wrinkle you could think of here. It even capture hair detail. So if you're looking for very specific, accurate casting, you'll want to use alginate. But if you're looking for a quick way, the plaster bandage one works just great for this. So there you have it. We've used a lot of plastic bandages, a little bit of time, and we saved a lot of money, and we've made ourselves a generic face positive of our own faces. And again, this is a cheaper alternative than using alginate, uh, though alginate really does uh, give you a lot more detail and things like that. So for a quick and easy way to make a positive cast of your face, the plaster bandages work just great. Um, just keep in mind that it's plaster and you ha it's always good to have a second person handy in case you get yourself in a bind where you need to get it off or you have some kind of a reaction. So always be safe, have a partner if you can, and enjoy your face mask. Positive, why do I keep saying mask? Face positive, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.